Right, so in this screencast we're going to do this junction down here. Just a simple uh, T-junction, but we're not going to use the junction wizard. We're going to do it manually, and this is a useful tool for not only when you are doing things manually, if you've got something slightly out of the ordinary, then um, it would be useful to be able to use uh, the tools manually. But also, if you are using the junction wizard, it's very useful to understand what the junction wizard is doing, so that when you do need to edit or tweak, you can. So, to do this, you can do it in Civil 3D 2018 or 2019. I'm using 2019 here, 2019.1 actually. Um, uh, 2017, I don't think has the connected alignments, but correct me if I'm wrong on that one. To do this, I've just done a little bit of preparation. I've obviously got an existing ground surface. I've got a couple of alignments in there and some feature lines with some levels on there that I need to tie into. I've created my profiles. So that's the main road profile there. There's the levels for the buildings. And then I've got my side road that we need to tie into to this car park level. And we're tying into the main road, the Smithy Brook Road. Now in order to do that, I've got this surface here, this profile of a surface here, which is actually just a temporary corridor that I've created. I'll just show you that. Because I need to tie this centre line here into this road here. So in order to do that, I just very quickly created a simple corridor and froze it off. Just a little corridor using the standard assembly in here, oh I've obviously still got that selected, here we go, the standard assembly in here and then I've surfaced that and that just gives me the levels where that junction is coming in. So that's all I've done uh, there. On top of that I have created my assemblies. Okay, So just to avoid doing the targets I've created one for the side road which is the correct width and crossfall and I've created one for the main road which is also the correct width and crossfall. But of course you could always set targets and use one assembly if they've got different widths. You just set the targets. If they haven't got different widths then you just use the one assembly. And that's just to place on the on the main road here and the side road here just around the junction you know before and after the junction. Right so let's crack on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my offset alignment. So I'll pick my alignment. It's the easiest way to get to the right tools use the launch pad, create the offset alignment. I'm going to do it uh, from, I don't need to go all the way to the end, I'll just go up to say 200, chain is 200. Uh, this road will be 365 wide and all the everything else is set. We can also now create the offset profiles, we've been able to do that for a while now. You pick your parent profile, which obviously um, I've only got the one in there, VP3, and you pick your crossfall. It's going to name it and put a style on it. You can superimpose that onto your existing profile that you've already created, but I don't really find much need for doing that unless I had something more complex like super elevation going on uh, in that area. So that's, uh, that's all set. And there we are. So we now have got our offset in width, but we've also got height data here. So let's do the side road. So again, offset alignments. This time they are 2.25 wide. 2.25 wide. And again, we'll get it to do the profile. So now what we would do is, if we, in the old days when we did this manually, we would have to find out the level here by creating a temporary corridor. Find out the level of the curb here and create a temporary corridor. And then tie them in in the profile. But we've already got the levels now. So what we can do now is we can create a connected alignment. And this will connect this alignment to this alignment using the parameters that we've requested or the, that we ask for. And it will also connect it vertically in the profiles. Okay, so we'll do connected alignment. It asks me to select the second alignment we're going to connect to. Asks you where you want to put the, uh, the alignment. So I'm going to put it in this quadrant here. I'll accept that. We'll go for a 12 meter radius. The connected overlaps, it's going to have an overlap of 5 meters or whatever you type in there. Just worth noting that, so I'll just mentally recall that later on. So we've got our alignment style, etc. And there's our profile. So it's going to connect profile 1 
which is our offset left to Beecham Court, which is this profile here, and it's going to connect that to profile two. This is vertically, not horizontally, um, uh, to here, and it's going to offset left to Smithy Brook. Okay, so these are our two profiles, so we're connecting it horizontally and we're connecting it vertically. You can put a little a little K value in there if you want to have a uh, vertical curve on there. If it won't fit in, it'll just straight line it. Just hit OK. That's done that one. Now the direction it's drawn that is from the first line I pick to the second line I pick. So I need to have an assembly which has the curb and footpath on the left and the road on the right. So if I'm going to use the same assembly, I'm better just reversing that here so I can have the same assembly with the footpath on the left and the road on the right. So again, we'll do a connected alignment, pick this alignment, select the direction, hit enter, and again, I'll do a 12 meter radius, five meter overlap, and the profiles will set that small K value as well, if it fits it in. And then we'll just hit OK. So we now have all our levels. We could go away and hide some of these alignments. We don't need to see them necessarily. Uh, but I'm going to leave them in for now. We'll just go straight to creating the corridor. So we'll do the corridor. Just call it Junction 1. We're going to do by alignment. So Smithy Brook Road. Notice it's, it's all them alignments. It's made for me. I haven't had to do any work for them. Smithy Brook Road. Make sure I pick my vertical design. Make sure I pick my assembly, which will be my main road. Don't need to do the target surface. We'll do that at the end. We'll hit OK. I've already set the frequency. And as I say, if they've got different width of the roads, or you've got widening zones, or widening around the bend, you're going to need to set the targets. But I don't need to in this case. We're not going to go right to the end. So I'll just say we want to stop the main road at the junction. Okay, and we're good to go. Uh, what I'll then do is add a region afterwards. This time I'm going to pick where the junction is on the left. So this is an assembly which has got a crown and then the footpath, the, the footpath on the right, but no footpath on the left, no curb on the left. And we don't need to go to the end. We need to go to the next finish of the bell mouth. I'm going to drop the frequency down in this case just to a meter. There's a bit of a curve on it as well. And again we don't need to set the targets because I'm using the assemblies that match. Add a region after and we'll go back to using our main road and we just need to go up to change 200. So I'll just show you what we've done just so you can see it. Also so I can check it. So that's our, our road that we've created. Let's just double check it in 3D and make sure nothing silly has happened. No, nope, that's fine. So we're ready to, to build this junction on here now. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do it by the uh, corridor parameters. I want to add a new baseline, which is Beecham Court. Make sure you pick your vertical line uh, alignment as well, so your profile. Add a region, and this time I'll go back to the side road. Need to expand that. Don't need to go to the end, we need to go to the longest curb return. You'll see the one on the right is longer, so I'm going to go to this point here. Frequency I'll leave. Again, targets are already uh, in the assembly, so we're okay. Now, the other thing I need to do is I need to add another region after and use a half section. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm not going to, I'll go from the 27.348, but I don't want to go to the end. And that's because this side here on the left hand side is a shorter curb return. And you'll get that whenever you have different radii on your curbs. Or in this case, we've got the same radii, but the road going in is not perpendicular, which is obviously common. Um, so you end up with this short gap between the two curb returns. So that half section just fills that gap in and keeps everything nice and neat and perpendicular. Need to drop the frequency down. Uh, it's such a small section, maybe 250 mil in there. And just hit OK so you can see what's happening. 
So there we are. And these are getting ready to meet, hopefully. Excellent. So now we're going to do our curve returns. You can see that extra half section there, so we'll curve return around there, and we'll curve return around there. So let's go and add a new region. Back in the corridor properties. Add a baseline. And now we're going to pick our curve return, the first one we did, which is KR10 in this case. Um, I should have probably named it left or right. And um, we'll hit OK. Make sure you pick that profile. There's only one in there. Remember it created it. We didn't have to go and manually create anything. Add a region. And we're going to use our curve return. Now remember we don't want to go from start to finish because we've got that 5 meter overlap. So that's nice and easy. So we'll go 5 meter there. And we'll knock 5 meters off there. I'm going to drop the frequency right down. Maybe a meter. And we'll go in and set our targets. So the carriageway on the right hand side wants to target an alignment and the centre line alignment of Beecham Court. And it also wants to do offset left to Smithy Book Road. Vertically, vertical target for the simple carriageway. Wants to also be a profile, Beach and Court VP4. Oh, and also offset left to Smithy Book Road. Forget all these other ones, these are to do with the roundabout that I'll be doing later. So we want offset left to Smithy Brook. There's the profile it created for us, and we'll hit OK. Now there's one other thing that needs to happen in here as well, in that we need to add an extra frequency in. I'm going to show you a, a better way of doing it because um, well, it's not a better way of doing it, but a way that will show you why we need to add this additional frequency in. Those of you that have done junctions for a while will know will know why, but for those of you that haven't, so that's going to do the left-hand one. Let's do the right-hand one. So we'll add another baseline one, and we'll go curve return again. Pick that profile. Add a region. Make sure you pick the curb return. Five meters in, five meters before the end. I'll drop the frequency down to a meter again, just so it matches the other side. Hit OK. And set the targets. So the carriageway on the right wants to go to Beecham Court and to offset left Smithybrook Road. And vertically, it wants to do the same. Beach and Court VP4, offset left Smithy Brook Road, vertical profile. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK, and rebuild the corridor. And we'll have a look. It wouldn't take long to model. And there we are. Now, that gap in the middle there, that's the one that we need to add in because we've told it to go along here every one metre, and it's done that done the same here. There's a few extra ones where there's a vertical change or uh, uh, there's, there's no horizontal change so it'll be a vertical change. But of course that one meter isn't necessarily going to hit that point. So all we need to do is add a section, pick the region and select that point. Go and pick the next baseline which is this one here and add a point on that side. Enter and that now targets that beautifully. Let's have a look at it in the object you are, and here we are. So that's beautifully tied in, curbs all nicely tied in, all the levels correct. And then one last thing to do, we didn't do the earthworks because we can do that all in one go. Um, and again, you can do it with the uh, target button here, but that will ask you to do each individual region. If you go into your corridor parameters and set all targets. You can do them all in one go. Existing ground, hit OK, hit OK. Rebuild the corridor. And it'll do my earthworks all the way through. Just change it to plan view. And you'll see I've now got my earthworks set in the corridor. Close that down. 
So next time you need to do a simple junction like that, by all means, the Junction Wizard does a lot of that work for you automatically um, and has some advantages, but at least you'll understand what it's doing. Um, and if you've got something a little bit more complex where you've got very unusual curbs or unusual slopes on your roads, um, then you can now apply it manually.